How's it going guys? It's Chris here and in this video we'll be talking about the CPU and its components. We're going to be going through its role, the main units it has, and some of its registers. The number of registers you need to know may seem daunting, but by the end of this video you'll see that it's not. So let's crack on with some basics first. CPU stands for Central Processing Unit, but it's often just called the processor. The CPU is the piece of hardware within the computer that controls the manipulation of data, and its role is to execute instructions given to it. We can reduce the CPU structure to three smaller units. So let's take a look at each of them. The first of these units is the arithmetic, or logic unit, which contains the circuits that actually perform the operations on data. This might be something like addition or subtraction or performing Boolean logic operations such as equal to or less than. So when you're making calculations or selection statements in your code, this is where they're actually handled in the computer as it executes them. If you're asked in an exam to define or explain what the ALU does, a model answer would be, an arithmetic logic unit carries out two types of operations, arithmetic and logic. It can carry out normal mathematical functions such as add, subtract, multiply, and divide, as well as comparing values to decide if one is less than, greater than, or equal to the other. The control unit is the circuitry that coordinates the activities of the CPU, so it has a massive role to play in controlling the computer as a whole. It will determine how data moves in and out of the memory and where it needs to go within the CPU. So a model answer, if you're asked to explain or describe what a control unit does, is a control unit supervises the fetch, decode, execute cycle, ensuring that the data that is being processed is put into the correct register. We also need to talk about the clock, and it is what defines the time each basic operation of the processor takes, like the movement of data, and it takes the form of a sequence of voltage pulses. Think of it less like a normal clock, but a metronome musicians use to keep their time, and uses signals to help. If you're asked in an exam to describe or explain the CPU clock, you can say that a clock generates a signal which synchronizes the operation of the processor and the movement of data within the processor. There's no explicit clock unit in a CPU, so don't worry about it not being in the diagram, and we're not including it in the three main units. In fact, our final main unit is the register unit. Registers are memory cells which operate at very high speeds, and the CPU has many of these, each of which holds a small amount of data. These registers can hold instructions that the CPU needs to execute, or a memory address if you need to read or write to memory. Let's dig deeper into registers. Essentially, a register is a very fast type of storage which stores details of operations that are being dealt with by the fetch, decode, execute cycle. Think about the ALU we mentioned earlier. Once it's added something, it needs a place to store the result, right? So it goes into a register. There are some registers which are not specialized and have some generic use. These are called general purpose registers. So let's talk a little bit about what they are. For everyday processor duties, such as reading and writing data, general purpose registers are used. Often there are 16 of these in a CPU. In this case, they are usually noted from R0 to R15, as we always start counting from zero. A small example of using one of these registers can be load content of X into R2, add contents of Y to R2, store the contents of R2 in Z, where X, Y, and Z are memory locations. In order to make the CPU perform as fast as possible, some registers are specialized, so each has a specific purpose. These are called dedicated registers. When these all work together, a processor can perform its duties at high speed. Let's move on to our dedicated or specialized registers of a CPU. We need to know five of these for our AS. The first of which is the current instruction register. This stores the instruction that is currently being executed by the processor. The program counter temporarily stores the address of the next instruction that will be executed by the processor. The memory buffer register temporarily stores the data that has just been read or the data we are about to write. 
As an aside, when we hear the word buffer in computer science, it usually means an area where data is held for a short while. The memory address register temporarily stores the memory location or address of where the data from the MBR is about to be read from if we are reading data, or the data we are about to write to if we are writing data. The status register contains bits that are set or removed depending on the result of execution. So it records the current status of the process in order to keep the computer updated of progress. If an error occurs, these bits can be set. And if they are, a computer can throw a nasty error on your screen. If you're super unlucky, you'll get the dreaded blue screen of death. And we're done. Let's have a quick recap. We learned about the CPU and dived into its role, its units and its registers. We know what general registers are and we learned about five dedicated registers. The current instruction register, the program counter, memory buffer register, memory address register and status register. That's it.